ask you about this um, album. The album that has, um, well, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Is it only six tracks, the music album? We had to let a track go. Okay. On the new Electric Lady Dream. Pardon? The new Electric Lady Dream, you had to let a track go? Yes, it was called Searchin', a famous song written by a Libra Installer. Which is on this CD. It is on there? It's on, it's on this bootleg, which I don't know if it's a bootleg, but I got it off the internet years ago. It says Buddha Records. I know, but they leased it to a company in Canada, and they've sold hundreds of copies, and they can't even give me... I, I'm probably due at the most... Uh, a dollar ten cents would be my royalties uh, on that record, just for the the union scale payment and all that. Um, it, it's just so amazing. Well, this has got nine songs on CD one, and um, that's the bag I'm in. Does that is that the first song? Yes, yes, it is on the original. So that's the bag I'm in. We were talking about. Uh, Buzzy Lenhart is music, or music is Buzzy Lenhart. They printed it both ways on the same album, so that caused confusion again. Buzzy Lenhart is music is on the spine, and on the back it says Buzzy Lenhart is music. Um, there, was a, there was a yellow flap that used to go under the plastic that said music is Buzzy Lenhart. <laughs> and they were trying to have it both ways. They were trying to tell people that that band music, they had heard so much of uh, the year before uh, was actually Buzzy Linhart's band. And, Got it. Uh, at the same time, the uh, the president of the company, Bill Bogart, was claiming that uh, that I was actually music. <laughs> I get it. Who's Douglas H. Rauch? That's the great, great young bass player, 20, 20 years old at the time, this record was uh, created. He was the one who knew to tell me, hey man, we should take our tape over to Eddie Kramer, man. They're building a new... <laughs> he talked so laconically. Um, he went on to play on many a great album. He was with, uh, with Buddy Miles and then Santana and then... Um, John McLaughlin's band, and then Jan, Jan Hammer. But poor Dougie died of an overdose at 26 years old and uh, said to be the guy who started to put the pop in the bass. It was from an idea he got from uh, Sly Stone's bass player, uh, Larry Graham, and he expanded on it and, and really changed uh, the approach. And you'll love the bass playing on that record. It's phenomenal. And, of course, Eddie Kramer was used to uh, doing challenging uh, things and creating difficult sounds for uh, Jimmy. I don't know if you can tell I'm pacing in my, <laughs> in my wheelchair. No, Pacing in My Wheelchair. It's his new album title. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, Eddie Kramer, had you known Eddie prior to um, Douglas Rauch no, finding him? But I had seen his name on Beggar's Banquet. Right on the on the on the on the cover of Beggar's Banquet, Beggar's Banquet, there was uh, six or eight famous, um, uh, maybe three or four or five famous engineers who worked on that with the Stones. But uh, you know the uh, the cottage uh, with the banquet table and Beggar's Banquet, that's like the cottage that uh, that they gave us when we played for the King and Queen of Portugal, we had our own cottage. They owned like a, it was like a, a little town, you know, and all the people who worked for them lived in their little own village. Now, Buzzy, okay, so John Siomas, we lost him recently, didn't we? John Siomas? Siomas? It, it's actually about five years ago. He played with Moogie Klingman, your old partner. Yes, uh, they actually, this same very band, oh, two things to remember, this band became Utopia. Check out the first two albums. The same lineup, including our sax player from the next album, the K uh, 
one of the next two albums that came out. And please remember that this album, the music album, which is now called Electric Lady Dream, uh, was top album pick in the world in Billboard. And uh, in those days, it meant the cover of the of the magazine because the rack jobbers uh, laying out their product in the stores were uh, reading what was hot and what wasn't hot. If you got on there, it could really make your career. If the record company could deliver, but time and again, uh, they never had enough records pressed to, to really get me a hit. It was very frustrating to get partway and stop. But the important thing we should discuss is the musicality of the music album now titled Electric Lady Dream, and that's available on, uh, we're not allowed to say these things, right? Nah, but that's all right. We only can say that um, you can check out buzzylinhart.com for more information. Um, but um, I have a couple of questions, and, and hold that thought. You said to two things to keep in mind. One, this became the great Utopia band with Char Todd Rundgren. Yes. Uh, the second thing to remember was, what, the musicality or the rack jobber thing? Um, um, the fact that it got top album pick. Top album pick, okay. Billboard. Now, um, actually, I'm shocked and proud to say that every record that I've ever released got that honor, and I don't even think some famous people didn't, don't even get it every hey, time. Hey, uh, if I can interject, it's my second album, Love and Flame, was an import from France, right, on New Rose Records? I went into the late Roman Kozak's office at Billboard. I don't know what you're talking about. Billboard magazine. Yes. I was up at Billboard, and I had a copy of my second album from Paris. I see, right. That's and I gave it to Roman Kozak, and he made me a Billboard click to pick, even though I was an import. Wasn't that nice of him? I think that's rare, isn't it? It is very rare. I might be, um, maybe from that decade, the only artist that had an import as a pick to click. Because it wasn't released in America. It was a European-only album. So, I mean, I'm going to interrupt everything now. Shaka Pifi. Shaka Pifi. I'm going through my Bobby Hebb 45s, Buzzy. Yes. And we'll get back to music, but this is important. And I thought I saw Summer Wind, but it was actually Summer Wine. Wow. I never connected that Summer Wind and Summer Wine, right? Frank Sinatra, Summer Wind. Nancy Sinatra, Summer Wine. Lee Hazelwood's great song. One of her greatest hits. I forgot about that song. Well, now I have not heard that song in, what, 10 years? I have it physically in my hand yesterday. What are the odds that some radio station is playing it as I'm driving to the station tonight? They're, they're slim unless there's something, something happening that's, uh, that's not a completely revealed. Incalculable. It happened by chance. But the aliens know that you and I talk about coincidences, so they threw me a big coincidence. Okay, Joe, you had that record in your hand. You thought it was Summer Wind. It's Summer Wine. And you're going to be speaking to Buzzy, and here's a song on your radio on 7.40 a.m. with Bob the Music Man. Too funny, Buzzy. Too funny. I had a very similar thing happen yesterday, and uh, uh, I can't explain exactly, but I was reading some printed material... And uh, at the exact same second that I read a word, word in the sentence, the TV said the exact same word. At the moment I, I read it. I'll repeat what I've said before. Scientists claim, a scientist claims, with supercomputers just 50 years far off, super, supercomputers that can create virtual realities, he said, the odds of us living in a virtual reality right now is 95%. So if we're in, in some computer world, it's very easy for someone to go back in time, forward in time, because our whole concept of time goes right out the window. It's all an illusion. But it doesn't mean there's not another, there's not a home base. It means that we're not looking at it. Right. We're in a cloud, and that esoteric cloud is... Um, operates on a whole other system than what we're led to believe. So we're lied to, just like we're lied to about the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus, we're lied to about time and space. 
and we think it's all linear and you can't go backwards, but lo and behold, you can because it isn't what they tell us it is. The world ain't flat and it ain't round either. It's right. neither. Here's my new quote. The world ain't flat, it ain't round either, it's neither.